to Awesome Possum Hobbies of Games. I'm Chris, and I'm back with another Commander opening. This one is Duskmorn House of Horrors. This is the Endless Punishment deck. Uh, you know, the retail price for these is about $39.99, and current price at the time of making video is just about $80. There's the real prices on the right hand side. Um, you know, check them out if you want to get one of these. This one's probably the, the most expensive one out there. If you could find it for retail, buy it. It's a great, great value. And on top of that, it comes with two legendary, tra uh, two legendary traditional foils and includes 10 arch enemy cards and a collector's booster sample pack. So that's, that's always good to know. Uh, Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. So of course the commander is Volgrath Harvo uh, Haro of Souls, which is right there on uh, on the cover, and of course you know it's a fake cover, which is strange. Let's go ahead and open her up, check it out, see what the, the contents are all about. This is a black and red deck, of course. That's a lot of glue. So, of course, there's. The sleeve inside the sleeve is arch enemy cards. We'll go over that here at towards the end. And also inside here is another envelope with Duskmorn Collector's sample pack and a cardboard box, which you know me, I don't play with those. I uh, a lot of cheap boxes I got off Timu and other other ones. So this is goes right in the cycle. Nothing else in that package. Some punch out things, including some locked doors, which are fantastic for Duskmore. Hold on to those for later. Also in here, there's the deck and nothing else other than some plus one, plus one, minus one, minus one counters. And a fold out. The fold out itself is Volgrath, Har Harrower of Souls. Weak and greedy, centuries ago, the moth-like demon Bogoroth, Bogoroth, well, however you pronounce it, heard a whispered description of himself from his imprisonment within the walls of the Vendrell mansion that were quite right. He wasn't weak or greedy. He only wanted the power that he deserved and the space that he needed to stretch his wings. So there you go. Want the rest of it? There's the text. Go ahead and zoom in and check it out. On the back is special rules. So information from Arch Enemy. Arch Enemy is a magic format where a team of three players faces off against an all-powerful Arch Enemy. When playing alongside the Commander format, the Arch Enemy starts a life with 60 life, and other three players share 60 life as a team. Before the game begins, decide who plays the Arch Enemy and then shuffle the deck of oversized schemes. Uh, the arch enemy always goes first. They set a scheme in motion at the beginning of their first main phase each turn by flipping the top card of the scheme deck face up. Then uh, or they resolve the effects of the scheme, which gives them a power boost against the, their multiple opponents. The other players take a share turn working together to take down the arch enemy Will you survive the onslaught of schemes, or will the arch enemy mercilessly crush you and your teammates? There you go. So, and then of course the deck itself. Let's go ahead and check out the deck. We'll zoom in here, and let's open it up. Trusty pocket knife. Get that open. Clear. Clean. Five card is popular formats of magic and what you do on your turn, which is included with every commander deck these days. And then the commander itself, this is the borderless foil, which is all of them. It is Vogavoth, Horror of Souls for a black, a red, and two generic for a 4 4 legendary creature, Elder Demon, has flying. Ward, you have to pay two life in order to target it. And whenever an opponent loses life for the first time during each of their turns, put a plus one, plus one counter on this guy and draw a card. So it's got a built-in draw engine on top of that. It gets bigger as soon as they lose life. If they try targeting it with the actual um, ward, you know, we'll go ahead and force them to, to lose life. You know, it's only once per turn, so 
you know, multiple things that affect him multiple times in a turn aren't going to work. But you know what? It's okay. It ha and it has to be during their turns. That's always something to be aware of. Next card is the Lord of Pain for a black, red, and three generic for five, five legendary creature, human assassin. Has menace. Your opponents can't gain life. And whenever a player casts their sp uh, first spell each turn, choose another target player. The Lord of Pain, Pain deals damage equal to the spell's mana value to the chosen player. Nice. That guy's really good. Next card is Fear of Burning Alive. Actually, I'm only going to stop on the rares and mythics. This is actually from the regular set of Deskmore, which you can check that out here if you would like. I'm only going to stop on the rares and mythics or anything of substance. Nice little artwork for Feed the Swarm. That's a reprint. Arcane Signet. Lightning Grease. That's a nice little reprint. Can't get enough of those for an uncommon. Soul Ring. Hey, will Soul Ring get banned? Who knows? They say it won't. Command Tower. Bastion of Remembrance. Nice include in this deck. Blood Artist. Falcon Wrath Noble. Gray Merchant. Hey, Gary's always helpful. Morbid Opportunist, Sign and Blood. Where's the rares? Sir Conrad the Grim, light up the stage. Where's the rares? I haven't seen any other than the, the mythics that come with it. This little artwork from Mindstone. It's got a good mana base. First one is Persistent Constrictor for a black and four generic. It is a 5-3 creature zombie snake. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, they lose a life, and you put a negative one, negative one counter on up to one target creature they control. And of course, this card has Persist. When this creature dies, if it had no minus one, minus one counters on it, return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a negative one, negative one counter. Fun. So it's, you know, you're able to hand out some minus one, minus one counters on each opponent's upkeep. That sounds great. And they're making them lose a life. It's it's like it's designed specifically for the commander. Yeah, that's 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 really good. So next one is Sadistic Shell Game for a black and four generic. This is a sorcery starting with the next opponent in turn order. Each player chooses a creature you don't control. Destroy the chosen creatures. So your opponents get to choose first, and then at the end, you get to choose creature, and you just get all of the chosen creatures are destroyed. Suspended Sentence for a black and three generic. Instant instant target, uh, destroy target creature and opponent controls. That player loses three of your life. Exile this card with three time counters on it and of course it has a suspend cost of one black and one generic with suspend three so you know, when it's exiled you get to, when you pay that either the suspend cost or after it is cast it will be put in exile and it will be played again after the third counter is removed from it nice barb flare gremlin for a red and three generic it's a three two creature gremlin First strike and haste, and whenever a player taps a land for mana, if this card is tapped, that player adds one mana of any type that land produced. Then that land deals one damage to that player. Nice little way of adding some extra mana production, as well as doing some damage to players. Yeah, it's gonna speed the game up quite a bit, but will it be worth it? Who knows? Next card is Lethal Arsonist for a red and two generic for a one, two creature human wizard. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, this card deals damage equal to its power to that player. And it has Undying, so when this creature dies, if it had no minus, oh, plus one, plus one counters on it, return to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Next one is an actual room. And next card is an enchantment room. It is Spike Corridor and Torture Pit. Spike Corridor is one red and three generic. And when you unlock this door, create three one one red devil creature tokens when 
with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to any target. Torture Pit is one red and three generic. If a source you control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage plus two. It works incredibly well with the commander. So it's kind of like almost an auto include. Next one is Star Athlete for two red and one generic for a three two creature human warrior with menace. Uh, whenever this card attacks, choose up to one target non-land permanent is controller may sacrifice it. If they don't, this card deals five damage to that player. And of course it has blitz. So blitz cost is one red three generic. If you cast this spell for its blitz cost, it gains haste and when this creature dies, draw a card, sacrifice it at the beginning of your next end step. Next card is Seance Board. Two generic mana for an artifact. Morbid at the beginning of each end step. If a creature died this turn, put a soul counter on this card. And then tap, add X mana of any one color, where X is the number of soul counters on Seance Board. Spend this mana only to cast instant sorcery, demon, and spirit spells. So it can go in a variety of different decks. Next one is a reprint with Bedevil. Next one is Mogus, God of Slaughter, which is another reprint for a black, a red, and two generic for a 7-5 legendary enchantment creature god. Has indestructible, and as long as your devotion to black and red is less than seven, this creature is not, or this card is not a creature. At the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, Mogus deals two damage to that player unless they sacrifice a creature. That's a little include. Next one is Braids, a Risen Nightmare. Two black, one generic for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature nightmare. At the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker. If you do, each opponent may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with it. For each opponent who doesn't, that player loses two life, and you draw a card. Fantastic include for this commander. Next one is Decree of Pain, which is a reprint. We'll talk about that one. Fate Unraveler. This is a, a f enchantment creature hag for one black three generic for a three four. And whenever an opponent draws a card, this card deals one damage to that player. Another fantastic include for this commander. This is a Kedrick Parasite for one black. It's a one one creature horror. And whenever an opponent draws a card, if you control a red permanent, you may have this card deal one damage to that player. A nice little reprint here has not been seen in quite some time. I, th I believe this is the first time this card has been reprinted in many, many years. Price <laughs> reflecting that. Next one is Mask of Grizzlebrand. Two black, one generic for a legendary artifact equipment. Equip cost is three generic mana. Equip creature has flying and lifelink, and whenever equip creature dies, you may pay X life for X is its power. If you do, you can draw X card. So makes it so you want to have that creature die. Next one's Massacre Girl. This is a nice little reprint. Two black, three generic for a 4-4 four, four, legendary creature human assassin. Has menace and when a, this card enters, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So it just escalates. So if there's a, a lot of different creatures with a lot of different toughnesses, this girl can go crazy and destroy lots of different things. Speaking of that Massacre, another Massacre Worm, for three black, three generic, for a six five creature friction worm. When this card enters, creatures in your opponent control get minus two, minus two until end of turn. And whenever a creature in opponent controls dies, that player loses two life. Nightshade Harvester. This is an interesting reprint, it's not worth very much, but for a black and three generic, for a two two creature elf shaman, whenever a land an opponent controls enters, that player loses one life, put a plus one plus one counter on this card. So it works well with the commander, and then also, as people are putting lands into play, she gets bigger, much, much bigger. Next one is Blasphemous Act, great include. Brush Taunter, Brush Taunter, we haven't seen this one printed too many times, but for a red and four generic for one one creature goblin, it has indestructible. And whenever is this card is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target opponent. And then for a red and two generic, Breast Haunter fights another target 
creature. So it's a good way of making take damage. Chaos Warp, another good reprint. Of course, it's been printed into the ground. Combustible Gear Hulk, another okay reprint. It's not worth very much now. When it first came out, it was it was pretty good. It was really good. Next card is Enchanter's Bane for a red and one generic. Enchantment, at the beginning of your end step, target enchantment deals damage equal to its amount of value to its controller unless that player sacrifices. Uh, this is a card of note because of the fact that it is an enchantment that targets enchantments, forces people to either take some damage or they would have to sacrifice it. For a red card, this is not bad because it targets enchantments. So if you have an enchantment heavy area that plays lots of enchantments, check this card out. It might be worthwhile to try in your commander deck. Next card is Harsh Mentor. Good include for this deck. Rampaging Ferocidon. Tectonic, Johnny, uh, Tectonic Giant. Florian Vuln Scion. Nice little reprint, not worth very much. Kavik the Merciless. For a black, a red, and five generic for five four legendary creature human shaman, and whenever an opponent casts a spell, this creature deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. I believe this card was originally printed in Legends, though I could be mistaken. Um, we haven't seen it reprinted that often, but I believe this is the, the second reprint. Rakdos, Lord of Riots. For two black, two red, it's a 6-6 six, six legendary creature demon. You can't cast this spell unless an opponent lost life this turn. Flying, trample, and creature spells you cast cost one generic less for to cast for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. Spiteful Visions. Spiteful Visions is combination color, Rakdos colors, of red, black, red, black, plus two generic. It's enchantment at the beginning of each player's draw step, that player draws an additional card. Whenever a player draws a card, this card deals one damage to that player. Great way of activating for the commander. Stormfist Crusader. Let's reprint. Theater of Horrors. This card's not worth very much, but it's a good include in this deck for a red, black, and one generic. Enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Exile the top card of your library during your turn. If an opponent lost life this turn, you may play lands and cast spells from among the cards exiled with Theater of Horrors. For a red and three generic, Theater of Horrors deals one damage to target opponent or planeswalker. Nice. Vile Smasher of the Fierce. For a black, red, and one generic for two, three, Legendary Creature, Goblin, Berserker. Whenever you cast your first spell each turn, choose an opponent at random. This card deals damage equal to the spell's mana value to that player or planet's walker that player controls. Also has partner. It's an important distinction. Partner cards are great. Basilisk Collar. Solemn Simulacrum. Black Cleave Cliffs. Nice little reprint here. It has a land. This is one of those fast lands. It, when it enters, tapped unless you control two or few other lands. And it taps to reduce black or red. Canyon Slow. Dragon Skull Summit. Exotic Orchard. Foreboding Ruins. Raven Carns. Nice reprint. I haven't seen that one printed too many times. Shadow Blood Ridge. Sheevan Gorge, Smoldering Marsh, Spinnerock Knoll, Sulphur Springs, Temple of Malice, Witch's Clinic, Bloodfell Caves, Falling Wilds. Geothermal Bog, Leech Ridden Swamp, which is a nine basic swamp, Tented Peak, Temple of the False God, and some basics. Let's go ahead and check out the basics. Some swamps, more swamps, mountains, more mountains, and some tokens. First one is Human Soldier slash Scarecrow. 
devil slash scarecrow, 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 and again, and again, and again, again. On to the actual arc, arch enemy pack. I haven't seen Arch Enemy really printed in a while. All of these oversized cards. Oversized cards are unique, and I I just love them. So, first Arch Enemy card is When Will You Learn? It's a scheme. When you set this scheme in motion, each opponent exiles a top card of our library. You may cast any number of spells among cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. Ooh, that's rough. Next one is my crushing master stroke scheme. When you set the scheme into motion, gain control of all non-land permanents your opponents control until end of turn. Untap those permanents, they gain haste until end of turn. Each of them attacks its owner this turn if able. Fell my authority, ongoing scheme. An ongoing scheme remains face up until it's abandoned. Creatures you control get plus two, plus two and have fear. At the beginning of your upkeep, abandon the scheme unless you discard a card or by, pay, or by paying three life. Reality is mine to control. It's an ongoing scheme. Whenever you cast a spell, you may abandon the scheme. If you do, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. Running is useless. Another scheme. When you, when you set the scheme into motion, choose any number of creatures with different mana values. Destroy those creatures. Man, schemes are powerful. I've never really played Arch Enemy. If you have played, put it in the comments down below. You exist only to amuse. Another scheme. When you set the scheme into motion, choose one. If you control six or more lands, choose both instead. Create three 1-1 one, one red devil creature tokens with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to a target. Until your next turn, creatures your opponents control have base power and toughness of 1-1 one, one and lose all abilities. Next scheme. A call for slaughter. When this scheme is in motion, create three 1-1 one, one red devil tokens with when this creature dies, it deals one damage to a target. They gain haste until end of turn. If the source you control would deal damage this turn, it deals that much damage plus one instead. I will savor your agony. When the, you set the scheme into motion, choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. Destroy target creature, destroy target, uh, or target player draws a card, target player gains five life. Your nightmares are delicious. When you set this game into motion, each opponent who has more than five cards in hand discards cards equal to the difference. Then if fewer than three cards were discarded this way, you draw three cards. No secret is hidden from me. So this game, when this scheme is in motion, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card. You may exile that card without paying as a mana cost. Then if you control six or more lands, repeat this process once. Well, there's a, a scheme, small scheme deck. I wonder if the, the other scheme cards are different or the same. We'll find out here as I go. And then of course, the collector sample pack. If you guys like this kind of content, please remember to like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. All the, the likes and subscribes go a long way for the algorithms, as well as hopefully one day I can hit the thousand. So first card is, of course, advertisement garbage. It is winter. Cynical Opportunist for a black, a green, and two generic for a 2-5 legendary creature human warlock. Has Death Touch, and whenever this card attacks, mill three cards. Has Delirium at the beginning of your end step. You may exile any number of cards from your graveyard with four or more card types among them. If you do, put a permanent card from among them on the battlefield with Finality Counter on it. Nice. And a Foil Saw which is just uncommon. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, I hope you have a fantastic week and remember to keep it rolling. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to like the video and subscribe if you'd like to stay updated. Have a great day and keep them rolling.